Hey guys, it's John here from Sonic Drive Studio. I hope you're all doing well. Man, if I got something cool to show you guys today, because we're finally gonna take a look at an amp from Blue Guitar, the Amp One Iridium Edition. It's very powerful, it's versatile, it's lightweight, but also heavy. So today we're gonna check out what this thing does, and of course we're also gonna try it out with a bunch of cool guitars. Thomas Blug, who is the man behind Blue Guitar, not only is a well-known guitar player, he has many years of experience in the guitar gear industry. Back in the day he was primarily known for his work with the brand Using Kettner, but some years ago he decided to go his own way to basically create the amp of his dreams. Amps that are capable of producing all the classic tones in a small and lightweight package, but with no compromise when it comes to tone and features. As I'm filming this, there are two versions of this amplifier. There is the Mercury Edition, which is more of a vintage style amplifier when it comes to the amp voicings. And that one is primarily geared towards the classic rock players, basically. And then we also have this Iridium Edition, which is basically geared towards the high gain rock and metal players. Now that's not to say that this one cannot do classic rock and that the Mercury Edition cannot do high gain because they can. But yeah, I'm also looking to do videos on the Mercury Edition soon, so keep your eyes open for that. So what kind of amp is this really? Well, I do not have the inside technical knowledge of how this thing actually works, but it's kind of a hybrid design. It does have this little cool nanotube in the power section though, that really helps with the tone. It's a 100 watt amplifier, so you can crank it up really loud when you need it to. It's got a lot of thump, just as the big amp heads. And one of the cool and unique things about these amplifiers is that when you crank them up, they start to sag and compress, just as how a real tube amplifier head would. So the power section alone on these things is pretty unique and it does things that no other similar product can do basically. At first when I heard about these amplifiers I was like, they look cool but those small pedals usually cannot capture the tone of those big tube amplifier heads. But then I started playing through it and I was really, really surprised. I couldn't believe it basically. Anyway, so this amp has four channels. We have the clean channel, the vintage channel, the classic channel and the modern channel. So it starts off clean and it gets heavier and heavier when you go up the list. The clean channel has a dedicated volume control and it will start to break up when you crank it. Which I really like because it makes this clean channel that much more versatile. You can even get a nice British crunch out of it. The overdrive channels have a gain and a master or volume control. We also have this main master volume control over here and a reverb control for dialing in the amount of reverb. I think the foot switches can be assigned to perform different functions but the sort of main and basic functions are switching the channel from clean to overdrive on this foot switch, turning the boost on and off with this foot switch, and turning the reverb on and off with this foot switch. Now this amp also has some additional sort of hidden switches over here on the side, like the effects loop parallel or series switch, the noise gate switch, which has an off, soft, or metal mode. The metal mode is basically more extreme and more tight sounding. And then for the clean, classic, and modern channels, we've got a volume and a tone control. The main three band EQ over here does not really respond like your traditional tube amplifier. It responds more like a sort of studio equalizer. So it's a very musical and reactive EQ that's great for adjusting the amplifier to work well with your speaker, your cabinet, or your environment. Tone controls on the side have more effect on the amp sound itself, if that makes sense. These are more tone shaping options, basically kind of like a traditional three band amplifier EQ, but then all in one knob. When you turn them all the way clockwise, the sound is a bit darker and a bit more mid focused, a bit more narrow, so to speak. And when you crank it up clockwise, the sound gets more open with a bit more top end and a bit more bottom end. So sort of scooped, but without losing the mid range really. So that's a quite wide range of tones in one single control actually. And it's a feature that I really appreciate. So you can shape the character of the amplifier and the distortion over here, and then adjust the overall EQ balance over here. A very powerful way of doing things, actually. There's also a little control on the side here to dial in the amount of boost. And the boost is basically voiced to be similar to a Tube Screamer, but more subtle. Just to add some more push in the mid-range and to add a bit more gain. On the back of the amplifier, we have an effects loop over here with ascend and return, the guitar input, a recording output with high quality cabinet simulation that you can also turn off to use your own IRs and stuff like that. Two speaker outs, an 8 ohm and a 16 ohm output. And then also this MIDI one remote jack for controlling various functions with the dedicated foot switch. 
And of course, we also have the power switch over here. And also hidden on the underside of this amplifier, we have this uh, effects loop level switch. You can set it to high, which is a setting of plus four decibels, or you can set it to low, which is a setting of minus 10 decibels. So you can fine tune the level of your effects loop over here, which is a handy function indeed. One more thing before we check out some tones. These two things are actually magnets, so you can attach this thing to your pedal board without Velcro. So that's also pretty convenient and awesome. Just plug this onto your pedal board, and when the gig is done, you just take it off and put it in your gig bag. Phew, this thing does a lot. It's crazy how much this little thing does and how good this thing sounds. It even does more than I just told you, but now it's time to check out how this thing sounds. Now let's start with some beautiful clean tones and work our way up to the heavy tones. For these nice clean tones, I'm using my ESP LTD Phoenix Deluxe 1000 with the Fishman Fluence Modern pickups in it on the neck pickup through the clean channel, of course. Let's take a listen. Beautiful tones right there. So as I said, I was using the clean channel and I had the volume up to about five. So that's pretty clean, but with a small amount of grit on it, which is what I like for clean tones primarily. I just like the compression that it adds to a clean tone, basically. It makes everything sound a little bit more even. The reverb was on as well, and I had the reverb level up all the way. And I must say that the reverb on this thing is a little bit on the subtle side. It would have been great if the reverb control had a little bit more range on it, so that you could also dial it in to be a bit more extreme than it is. But that's just a small thing. On the side, I have the tone switch basically cranked up all the way for a more sparkly clean tone, kind of like a Fender combo. When you turn this control to the left, it gets a little bit more MIDI, so more kind of like a Vox amplifier, I guess you could say. Oh, and by the way, for all the tones in this video, I'm running the speaker out into my Captor Axe reactive load and then into York Audio impulse responses. For this first clip, I used a single 121 mic from the FTWN 212D120 pack. That's based on a Fender Twin, basically. And by the way, none of the tones in this video have any post-processing on them, aside from a simple low cut at around 70 or 80 hertz, just to clear out some sub rumble. Let's also take a quick listen to these tones in isolation. <laughs> Okay, now let's get a bit dirty with some crunch tones using my Gibson Les Paul Standard 60s on the bridge pickup, which is a Seymour Duncan JB. And I'm gonna use the vintage channel this time for a more classic rock sound. Here we go.
That sounded great. Very sort of Marshall JCM 800-ish. So as I said, this was through the vintage overdrive channel with a good amount of gain. This channel does not get super heavy though, so it's great for crunch tones and classic rock and stuff like that. And note that for all the clips in this demo, I'm cranking up the master volume control over here quite a bit to around five or six. And that's just basically to add some of that cranked tube amp warmth and compression. And for these crunch tones, I'm using the York Audio MRSH 412 M25 cabinet, which is basically a Marshall loaded with greenbacks on Mic Mix 01, which is a blend between a 57 and a 121 mic. Now also some isolated tones. <laughs> All right, now let's move up to the classic channel for a bit more modern, heavy rock tones. For these tones, I'm gonna use my ESP LTD Phoenix Deluxe 1000 in white with the Seymour Duncan pickups, the Seymour Duncan Custom SH5 in the bridge. Let's go ahead and take a listen to that right now. That sounded great. There's absolutely nothing about these guitar tones that says not a tube amplifier. It really sounds authentic. I really like the classic overdrive channel a lot. It's right up my alley tone wise. And for these tones, I'm also cranking up the little tone control on the side here up quite a lot for a nice amount of hair and thick low end. It kind of gets into boogie or diesel territory over here. So it's a really nice sound. Great for rock and even for metal as well. And by the way, also note that when you're playing this through an actual cabinet in the room, it sounds so huge with such a big low end thump. It's really a sight to behold. Pretty insane for such a small and lightweight amplifier. I just can't believe it. Now these heavy rock tones were going through the York Audio MES 412 OS cabinet, which of course is based on a Mesa Boogie 4x12 with V30s, also on Mic Mix 01. Let's check out these tones in isolation. All right, now let's get into the heavy metal stuff with the modern channel. First, we're gonna check out some six string tones with my ESP LTD Phoenix Arctic Metal with the EMG in the bridge. Here we go.
Great, great stuff. Plenty of gain on there indeed. So this was the modern overdrive channel with similar settings as before. And as you could hear, this channel sounds much more tight. It sounds kind of like an angle or an EVH. It does that modern metal thing very well. And again, for these tones, I also had this little tone control cranked up quite high. I just prefer how that sounds in the mix, basically. Now, as I said before, I really like that feature on the side here. It makes this amp very powerful when it comes to tone shaping. And I usually like to leave the three band EQ over here at neutral, so around middle. It just sounds really good that way. Now for these tones, I was using the York Audio MES212 V30, which is based on a Mesa Boogie 2x12 cabinet with V30s as well, also on Mic Mix 01. Now also some isolated riffs. <laughs> Now let's go even lower and heavier with my ESP LTD Stefan Carpenter baritone seven string, the SC607B1H with the Fishman Fluence Steph in it. Also on the modern overdrive channel, of course. Let's go ahead and take a listen to that right now. That was great and heavy, pretty tight, clear, but still organic sounding. And again, very similar settings as the previous clip. And I used the MES 412 OS cabinet again. Now also some isolated riffs for you. Okay, and now what you've all been waiting for, let's try this thing with an 8-string, my Ibanez M80M Meshuga 8-string, and let's go through the modern channel again, but this time enable the boost. Here we go.
damn, that sounded good. This thing sounds so great with extended range guitars. Straight out of the box, basically. And aside from the boost, I used similar settings as before yet again. And for the cap tones, I used the York MES212 cabinet again. Now also some isolated tones. Okay, so as you can tell, I'm genuinely very impressed by this amplifier, but I think that the tones in this demo speak for themselves. If you would have told me last week that an amp of this size with this weight could sound as good as a big tube amplifier or basically multiple tube amplifiers in one, I would not have believed you. I honestly think it's that good and I definitely recommend that you try one out in a store near you. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this amplifier and also let me know what you'd like to see me do with this, perhaps try it with a 9 string guitar. That's all for this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below as that really helps the channel out, I'd hugely appreciate that. And you can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you guys very, very soon. Cheers!